Now we have the most popular people in the room. They are green. They represent more than 170 brands. And they are from Hanikan. We have Eric and Fabian. Welcome. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Fabian. Uh, I am from the Digital and Technology Department uh, in Heineken, Malaysia. And I head the Applications and uh, Services uh, Department. Yeah? And together with me, I have... Hello, my name is Eric. It works, yes. So I'm from the supply chain part of Heineken. And uh, we work together on some, some topics related to digital transformation. And yes, indeed, we, we are the fun people. We, we come here in green. We carry our company colors with pride. Um, so here in Heineken, here in Malaysia, I would say, you can recognize us by, of course, our Heineken brand. But as just being mentioned, we, we actually have much more than just the Heineken brand. Um, and also here in Malaysia, you might know us from Tiger, Anchor, um, and many of our other beer here as well. And not only beers, eh? we're not just a beer company, we go way beyond beer as well. Uh, in Malaysia, you might know Apple Force, which is also uh, from our company as well. Um, so, yeah, maybe just as a starting point before we go into the content of our sharing today, which is about digital transformation, I also like to introduce a bit our company and the journey that we have started over the past years towards digital transformation. Let me see how this works. Okay. So first of all, um, so I'm building towards a story of the things that we're doing where Fabian will later go in more detail of what we have done here in Malaysia. Um, but to start with our company purpose, we drew the joy of true togetherness to inspire a better world. So there's actually two components I like to highlight here, uh, because today the capabilities that we will share has mostly to do with customer centricity or the obsession for our customers. Um, and I will share you later more about this. Uh, but the joy of true togetherness has to do with bonding, bonding with our colleagues, bonding with our customers, and to inspire with a better world has also to do with continuous improvement and building and investing in, um, how to say, yeah, a better environment. So our corporate responsibility agenda, I, I understood yesterday, sustainability was, was being discussed here, is quite an important and, and very meaningful part of our work, um, actually. So this brings me to our company values. Today we will be mostly talking about passion for consumers and customers. As I just already mentioned, it's about customer centricity. Um, but this also starts by making bold moves and having the courage to dream and pioneer, start new, new innovations. Like in, in Malaysia, you might know one of our, our, our courageous innovations, which is the Edelweiss product. But also some of our digital innovations, which are quite courageous, like our Drinkies beer platform. And you, can, you can order your beer and get it delivered to your footstep by our Drinkies, um, one of our very interesting digital innovations. It also contains care for people and planet. We invest a lot in healthy watersheds in Malaysia. We, we, do, we have a very bold commitment for what we call net zero production to really minimize or basically neutralize our carbon footprint in our, not only in our production, but in our entire distribution as well towards 2030. Um, the last one is enjoyment of life because this resonates really well with the products that we sell. Um, so today, as I mentioned, we will focus mostly on our passion for consumers and customers. And we can talk about this um, how to say, mostly in the context of customer obsession. So in what I'm sharing, 
for now is a journey of, I would say, the past seven years as a company. If you know the history of, of Heineken globally quite well, which is same as other, other beverage uh, companies as well, groomed through mergers and acquisitions, we have quite a differentiated landscape of how we run the business, how we run certain processes. And um, how to say, we started to work on digitalization from a process point of view seven years ago, or maybe even more than seven years ago. But from a global perspective, we started to map in different countries in the world, in different geographic, with different route to markets, our entire order to cash process. And, and later this builds up to how we are innovating it now quite fast with some systems as well. But it all started with customer journey map. How do we actually interact with our customers and how can we build seamless processes from our customers? So this is where we had to transform as a company, especially from a supply chain perspective, um, by building capabilities that had to do with production, building capabilities that had to do with cost management, like cost to serve and logistic trade term. We had to start to build capabilities like customer centricity. And this journey we have started, as I just mentioned, seven years ago. And um, yeah, so, so that's where we come from. Why do we want to improve certain business processes? So the next question that I will answer is then how do we do this? Just now I mentioned already, one of our important starting points is understanding our customer pain points. So this bill brings me to the passion for customers and consumers. Oh, I'm going backwards now, sorry. <coughs> Very difficult technology today. <laughs> Pretty much here um, explained is about customer centricity. So in, in our global footprint, we have engaged with uh, Customer Gorge. And Customer Gorge, we, we won some awards with that together with them in, in, in Europe. And, and if you're interested to learn more, because today I will briefly touch Customer Gorge, but there are some business cases available online, which are quite interesting to read. Um, but what is it about is that we engage with them to understand our net promoter score with our customers, but also with their customers, so to understand the entire route to market. And net promoter score is one thing, but while we do an assessment like this, we really analyze all the customer interactions that we have. And not only the commercial interaction points, like the negotiations, the business partnering, but also the ordering, the logistics, the interaction with the delivery man, and also the interaction on payment and settlement of any disputes or com complaints, for example. So this is a glimpse of a general view of, of how a system looks like, but what we really understood from analyzing customer interaction points is that our order to cash process is not only very manual in SAP for our own staff, it also comes with very little enhancements towards the customer in terms of understanding where is my order? I placed an order. When is it actually going to be delivered? Is it confirmed yet? All those, all those very basic things, for example. Um, the system also comes with some capabilities to help to track on, on closing your actions, but that more as a side note. So for us, the key outtake from analyzing our customer feedback was we have a burning platform to improve for today's sharing our order to cash process. And Fabian will later share how we have approached this problem in more detail. Um, so how do we win as a company? So first of all, so first of all, our company is about driving superior growth. I just shared just now already, we are innovating, we are bringing new brands to the market, some of, some of them you know, um, in Malaysia, for example, Edelweiss. Um, we also work on fund the growth through the, through the profit, continuously analyzing losses in our supply chain, like we, we call it design sustainable value, like we, we look at 
packaging materials, what, what is not relevant. Raise the bar on sustainability and unlock the full potential of our people. The last one is our best connected brewery strategy. So later Fabian will share in more detail what does it mean being the best connected brewer. And this starts with understanding your process, bringing digital solutions, but it's also about robots in our factory. In our brewery, factory is not a word that we actually use. We talk about our brewery. Um, so there's a wide landscape of different capabilities that we have there available. So we zoom in to how do we become the best connected brewer and, and what are we going to do with that. So in order to answer these questions, I'd like to hand over to Fabian for more details. All right. Thank you, Eric. If you notice, the reason why I'm standing far away from him is because I don't want to see him shot standing beside him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, how to become the best connected brewer? Right. The answer actually lies within the question itself, right? Which is to get everything connected, right? So, and as part of this uh, um, strategy, so in in a bit, um, I'm going to walk you through. Not so much about, uh, um, we'll, we'll give you a bit of insights on, on what we did, but what I want to emphasize on is the how we did it, right? Because I think uh, when we're talking about how we delivered digital transformation successfully, uh, we want to share with you some of the key learnings um, that we had while trying to deliver it, right? So um, I'm just going to start by giving you a glimpse of a little bit of um, what we are doing in the connected brewery space. Now, if you look on the left side here, right, as part of the bigger connected brewery agenda, we sort of segmentize it into two areas, which is a connected worker and smart brewery. So a connected worker really um, focuses on tools, applications that we deploy to help the workers to work more efficiently. Um, and the smart brewery is talking about systems, um, hardware that we implement in the brewery itself to help the brewery run more efficiently. Yeah? So, so two very separate uh, target audience. Now in the connected worker, right? Uh, there's so many stuff. This is just a glimpse of what we're doing. Uh, but some of the stuff that we're doing is like, um, we have digital uh, work instructions that we have rolled out. It's like a, a checklist, a, a task management system for the worker. This is for them to be able to um, monitor, for them to track progress about what they're doing. It also helps us to monitor uh, you know, productivity. We've got 3D printing, uh, which is also a uh, new technology that's being used for printing of uh, machine parts, right? Then remote life support. This is where uh, we get uh, experts from different countries sometimes to, 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 to connect uh, and we use augmented reality that to actually troubleshoot problems in the brewery. Um, and then as part of smart brewery, right? This is where we've got IoT platforms, where we've got you know, devices installed on the machineries where it also gives us back data where we use this to um, monitor the performance of our machines where in case we face um, any issues it helps us with preventive maintenance as well then we've got dashboard and analytics where again it's feeding us all of the data it's doing trend analysis for us so this helps us to optimize the the the, the, the production and then we've got robotics right so this is what eric had mentioned earlier where we're using um, 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 robots inside the uh, brewery as well to help us even to automate certain amount of tasks, right? So now this is just a glimpse of some of the cooler stuff that's going on. So now we very specifically want to zoom into one case study, right? Which is part of our um, um, ecosystem of platforms and digital products. This is where, as you realized earlier, we mentioned that Eric is from supply chain. I am from the digital and technology department. But why are the two of us standing here together right now? To, to talk to you is because we work more on a partnership uh, um, basis more than a I just give you whatever you want right so as he mentioned earlier one of the things um, one of the feedback right that we got uh, from the customer gauge was we it's difficult for us to track our order right so once the customer places it um, it's tough for them to track the orders they've got a you know call up um, and once they call up, you know, the person receiving the call needs to go in the system and check it manually, find out at which part is your process. Sometimes they say, oh, I can't check it, I got to get back to you, all of that stuff, right? So this was feedback that we got through the um, um, survey program that we did. And then what we decided to do based on that was um, 
to come up with a plan, right? How do we fix this particular problem? So now, what I want to zoom into and show you is that how do we combine our values, which is passion for um, consumers and, and customers, um, the strategy to become a best connected brewer, and um, using digital products to transform our order to cash process, right? So here you will see, we've actually, please um, you know, ignore the colors, it's not projecting too well for some reason, but this is actually a general order to cash process that, that we have, right? Now this was the initial process that we had. This is the process that we had which had a lot of issues with it in the sense that if you ask me whether it works, yes, it works. But is it working to its best ability? Maybe not, right? And hence the reason why we got such feedback from our um, customers. And if you would notice, right here, you see the little white boxes here, right? All of these were processes which are still very, very manual. While we had our ERP systems here, right? But it was still required manual intervention in order to execute a task, right? So the pain points that we had with the current, uh, with the current process, right? Was that, again, initially this started with one feedback, which was it was hard for us to track our order. What we did was we collaborated, and then not just between um, Eric's department and myself, but we also decided to call in the process experts, we call in the business experts, and together we sat down and we put the entire process onto a journey map that you see here, right? From the start of the process until when the process ends. And then we realized that one of the problems was visibility, but we also managed to find out a few other burning platforms, right? So which is, obviously there's too much of manual work in the whole entire chain, no visibility on orders, we don't get any data out of it. So even if we want to make an improvement, we don't even know where to start because we have no data because it's such a manual process. And then we also realized that um, we don't do truck uh, um, route planning optimizations. We leave it completely to the third party uh, logistics. And this sometimes um, leaves us with uh, you know paying more than we should. So when we put all of this together, and then we got our team to really sit and brainstorm, right? How are we going to fix all of this, right? And after uh, weeks and maybe even months of deliberating, um, we even tried to, to, to reach out to our um, other Heineken operating companies, right, from other countries to see, do they have any potential solutions that could help us with our um, case on hand? Um, so we did, we did find one from another country, but it wasn't a perfect fit for us, right? Because our processes here in Malaysia were far more complex. And number two is we were running on different ERP systems, right? As you can see what we pointed out here, we run on SAP here in Malaysia. So we had to make a lot of changes um, to the system, a lot of customizations, but we didn't want to customize the system to meet our process only. We also wanted to take this opportunity to refresh the whole entire process, right? That's the reason why we brought everyone together. We wanted to really relook into the process because although the process in itself may be a logistics supply chain topic, but even we as digital and technology, through our best ability, we also challenged a lot in the process to say, hey, did you consider doing it like this? Did you consider this? Would you mind doing it like this? And with this, we, after months of deliberation, we came up with a new process, right? So. We did make a few changes in the process. We did implement the system. So, so the entire process now has been fully digitalized, as you can see. Now, even from the start, whatever you see the W here, right? If you look at the legend up here, that means the W is executed using the web interface of the program that we implemented. Wherever you see an A, it is using a native application, a smartphone application, basically, to execute, right? Now, this is where from the beginning all the way to the end, right? We've digitalized the process, but not just digitalized. We've also implemented a lot of automations throughout the whole entire process as well, right? So whatever could be automated, we automated. And as an outcome, what did we manage to uh, achieve is that we've got, as an outcome, once this is implemented, we get improved visibility on all of our orders. Right, this was the first pain point that uh, kick-started this whole initiative. And then we managed also to 
optimize utilization of third party logistics providers um, simply because if you look at this point here, right, the moment um, they arrive at our brewery, they generate a QR code, our security checks them in. So then we know that they have arrived already, right? And then when they go to the next step, right, uh, you know, when, they, when it's being loaded, they do another checkpoint there. When they leave the brewery, there's another checkpoint there. So we know exactly how long was spent in the brewery. We know how, uh, we are, how long we are taking as well to load the trucks up before it goes out. Um, and then even for the last mile delivery, up to the time it is delivered to the warehouse, then we use a uh, electronic proof of delivery as well, right? Once the order has been delivered. So with implementing this whole thing, right, we managed to optimize the utilization of logistic providers. We managed, uh, we will invoke more distributor self-service, right? So now if they want to check on an order, they don't have to call up anymore. It's actually at their fingertips. Uh, they've got a link, click on the link, it goes in. You can track your orders similar to your track and trace when you're sending a registered parcel somewhere. You've got the same uh, track and trace system. It's pretty much the same feature. And as a whole, right, um, this process will give us a 30% reduction in end-to-end -end process time, right? So I just want to point out again that the, 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 the pain point that was presented to us in the customer feedback was no visibility on orders. But um, with the way we decided to run and implement um, the solution for this, and because of the approach that we took of bringing everyone together um, from all different departments, process experts, your technology experts, put them all together, we've managed to achieve actually even more right, than just fixing the problem of visibility. Now, what I want to share with you as um, a key learnings of what we actually um, learned throughout this process is it is not easy, yeah? So we learned a lot of things and we had many iterations on the way we ran this initiative. Um, and then what we wanted to share with you is, in our opinion at least, right, after many rounds of changing uh, the process, this is what uh, we feel that works best for us. Um, it starts off with some of the must-dos, which is engage with your customers and define the problem statement with them, not for them. Why we say this is because that means that there is an element of um, um, co-working, co-developing together with them. Because at the end of the day, um, you got to keep your customers happy, right? And whatever we are doing, we're doing it for them as well. Um, when you are sourcing for potential solutions, I think this was mentioned um, earlier by, by one of the previous speakers, is that ensure alignment with the company's digital strategy as well. Uh, this is important for a very practical reason, in my opinion at least, because if it's aligned with your digital strategy, if there's investments that are needed as well, it's, it's far easier to come up with a business case to get your, 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 your investment approved, right? Um, as I pointed out earlier, engage your business experts and refresh the processes. If you're already going to spend the time implementing something, take the opportunity to relook at the whole entire process holistically um, because this is not a one-man job. Yeah? Have clean data. Again, earlier it was mentioned, right? Golden rule when it comes to date, uh, data, input and output, garbage in, garbage out, right? So ensure that your master data is clean. Over years, right, because of, you know, change in policy on data governance and, and how data was being governed, it is very prone that after five years to 10 years, and our process was there for donkey years, right, previously, the data is not clean anymore after so many years, right? So you need to do a data sanitization. This is a very, very cumbersome process. It is not easy, but it needs to be done. Right, in order for you, know, for you to get the desired outputs that you want. Lastly, this one here is in bold because this is the most difficult part of any digital transformation, which is a change management area. Right? Why do I say that this is the most difficult part? Is because this involves people changing. Systems changing are easy. Solutioning was easy. Building the systems was easy. Implementing the system was easy. Getting people to use the system, not easy, right? Who here loves change? Show of hands, anyone here loves change? 
change for the better, yeah, yes. But again, right, we all want the change, but we don't like the hardship that comes with the change sometimes. Yeah. So this is where they say that start your change management process as early as possible because it is the most difficult thing that you will have to do in any transformation. Um, and what we've also learned is when you want people to change, exercise on the why you're doing it because when people understand why they're doing something and not just the what and the how to do it, but why am I doing whatever I'm doing, then they will act with conviction, right? And when they do this, you don't have a case of a blind leading the blind. They know exactly why they're doing whatever they're doing. And then some of the behaviors, right? Then when we run uh, projects now, we would like to emphasize and tell our team, hey guys, you must have all of these five, right? So I call this the four C, uh, the C four O's, right? Which is collaborate. Again, this is not a one-man show. Communicate. Um, don't keep something just in your head. If you think it has to be said, say it out. Um, always have your lenses of customer centricity because whatever you're delivering at the end of the day, your customers are going to use it, right? If they don't like it, they don't use it. You just wasted how many months of your time you, you will never get back. You have wasted investments from your company as well. So always remember, put the lenses of customer your customer on. Challenge, right? As I mentioned earlier, right? When we work together with supply chain, although the process was theirs, we challenged it as well from our end, right? And they listened to us. And they told us, like, hey, you know what? We never considered it, uh, but we're going to consider it into our process. And lastly, openness. If you were the, and we see this all the time, if you were the business expert and someone else is challenging your process, your nature is you're going to get defensive. Don't do that, right? As easy as it sounds, don't do that. Because only when you allow open conversations, you allow open challenges, that is where the real value is, right? And I would like to end my sharing today with uh, this quote which I found which I think is spot on right it says a success a successful digital transformation is not just about technology it's about people processes and a culture that embraces change and ladies and gentlemen that is how we um, delivered digital transformation in Heineken Malaysia thank you Yes, um, they have a Q&A and it's still the... No questions? We are confirming it. Yeah. Any, anyone from the floor want to just ask? Uh, so you talk about improving visibility for the customers as one of your outcomes. Um, but if I may ask, to what extent um, was that visibility? I mean, to what extent uh, was the customer, uh, yeah, exposed? I mean, to, to what sort of information? Or I mean, how how did you measure that visibility? Okay, so. I will use I will use this one. So, how to measure the feasibility of information that the sister that the customer receives, right? Um, well, basically, because you said that they, they will improve visibility. So, how did you measure that improvement? Ah, okay. So, basic. Hmm? Exactly. So, in a previous process, there was zero visibility. Customer had to understand what is happening with his order by calling or sending email or WhatsApp to the customer service representative. And with this process, comes with an application on the phone where a distributor can just see the status of all its orders. Have, to, have they been, been approved? Is the credit approved? Um, and in which stage of the process is it? Is it being loaded? Has it left the brewery? When will it roughly arrive? Um, so those kind of information are now like fully visible flow from zero to this. Yes. Okay. Thanks for your question. Some, some people want uh, top secret information. 
Now, this is basically our customer gauge uh, process. So customer gauge is a survey which is being prompted to all your customers. Could be on a random basis, could be on a sample basis. You can just prompt the system with that. Um, when you go through that, you can investigate deeper on certain distractors that are being prompted by the system. Um, and we did some customer, um, how to say, some um, dialogue as well. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> What size of can? <laughs> so we cannot share any volume related information, especially <laughs> not now. <laughs> we're, we're in our silent period, as you might understand. Okay, uh, and, and, and oh, you still have some questions, okay. Ah, so, very good question as well. Thank you for your question. So, why did we choose this process? And, why, and what did it inspire? So, first of all, it started really with what, I started with what I started presenting with in the beginning. It's within our values that we have a passion for our customers and consumers. And we aim to understand how we, can we reduce pain points for those customers and consumers. And this is what it ignited to really understand where do they actually have the pain point? They did have pain points in ordering. They did have pain points in understanding where's my order in the process um, and so on. And what is actually coming my way already? So it's really from, um, how to say, from our value to understand what, what can we do to make life better for our customers and consumers, driving a seamless customer service experience for them. And, and any okay. builds? Okay, um, I think we have to stop the questions. Thank you very much, uh, Eric and Fabian, for that entertaining, insightful, and passionate presentation. Right.